on January 11th, 1922, 14-year-old Leonard Thompson became the first type 1 diabetes patient to receive a shot of insulin. While there were some complications after the first shot, the second shot was administered on January 23rd, 1922. It was a roaring success and gave hope to many type 1 diabetes patients across the world. And thus, the story of insulin began. Back in the 19th century, those suffering from type 1 diabetes were rarely expected to live longer than a year or two after detection. This happens because type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease where the body destroys a cluster of cells in the pancreas that produces insulin. In November 1920, Frederick Banting, a Canadian surgeon, and Professor John McLeod from the University of Toronto started working to extract insulin from the pancreas. In December 1921 that year, a biochemist named James Collip joined the trio to help purify insulin so as to make it safe enough for testing on humans. And the following month, Thompson was administered the first dose. Insulin was the greatest medical breakthrough of the 20th century and remains the go-to treatment for type 1 diabetes. But even though insulin was a revolutionary medical advancement at that point in time, 100 years later, diabetes continues to be a leading cause of death. Globally, 15 out of 100,000 people suffer from type 1 diabetes with a 9.5% prevalence. The International Diabetes Federation has estimated that 451 million adults suffered from diabetes worldwide in 2017. This would increase to 693 million by 2045 if no effective prevention methods are adopted. And as for insulin, the once miracle drug still continues to be a wealthy affair as most of the economically poor nations struggle to get their hands on this go-to diabetes drug. And it gets even worse in some parts of the world as the lack of accessibility to insulin is compounded by the lack of accessibility to syringes used to administer it. Although new advancements like oral insulin and glucose-sensitive insulins are making headlines, what we need is to ensure that this medicine can be available, accessible and affordable a hundred years after it was formulated.